Hey all, sorry for the weird video quality and the audio issues from over there. I'm actually doing some 3D printing at the moment. Um, but I wanted to come back because I just wanted to talk about a manga I've been reading recently, Kitaro. Actually, two volumes of Shigeru Mizuki's Kitaro, uh, Kitaro itself, and The Birth of Kitaro. Now, for those not familiar, Kitaro is a very famous character in... Japanese culture, going back to the 60s, when the character was first published in Japanese manga magazines. And it's a horror story aimed at kids. So Kitaro is a one-eyed boy who can see spirits and monsters and yokai, if you're familiar with that term in Japanese folklore. And so he can uh, wander around and see strange things. Here's a good representative image from the manga. Now, what's unusual about Kitaro is that while aimed at the typical you know, young boys of the manga market, this manages to combine some action elements with some genuinely spooky and horrifying stories. Um, and that's well represented in the art style. Just as you saw there, there's this interesting combination of sort of stereotypical, simplified shonen um, art styles with this wonderful detail of the art. This is a classic Shigeru Mizuki thing where you get this beautiful artwork. Even though it's black and white, it still just really makes you feel like you're in a sweltering jungle, but combined with these simplified art styles, which is really interesting. So Kitaro is, it has some comedy, it has some action, uh, there's certainly no romance, there's certainly no real character development behind any of the, uh, the characters. But each story is a self-contained tale about some yokai, some Japanese um, spiritual creature, and we'll get to that term in a second, that basically threatens some people and Kitaro defeats. Now, yokai don't translate precisely to any concept directly in Western culture. Um, <clears throat> Yokai are almost embodiments or personifications of different um, of different things that can happen. So there's a, a yokai that is simply an invisible wall. There's a yokai that is the feeling of somebody following you. And there are yokai of particular places and yokai of particular powers. So you know, a yokai is not a, a demon or a goblin. It is not a particular race of creatures, although they are all supernatural. They vary wildly in their personality and in their um, temperament and in, indeed, their physical character design. So you have all sorts of weird yokai. Now, of course, Mizuki is drawing a manga, so he is free to do his own interpretations of these yokai. Uh, you know, for many of them, there is no single unified representation of them. Um, and uh, so Mizuki is, in a lot of ways here, um, celebrating the yokai of Japan. Importantly, yokai are not necessarily bad or evil or malicious. Yokai simply are. They are inscrutable. They are their own thing. And that's one of the things that makes the story interesting, is that Kitaro has some yokai allies... Um, as well as enemies. There are more enemies than allies, but it's, you know, it's a shonen story. What can you do? Um, what's wonderful is that Drawn and Quarterly have been publishing uh, Kitaro in several different um, uh, editions. So there's this kind of big edition and the small edition. Obviously, the big edition is much nicer. Um, that said, it's a little bit more expensive, obviously. So that's what you get. Um, this Kitaro is from all earlier Kitaro stories. So it's from... Does it say in here? I think it's from the um, 67 to 69 time frame. So late 60s on this. First came out in 59. And then these are, I think, from about the same time period. Maybe a little, uh, a little later on. Um, trying to see where it says here where this um, these series are from. doesn't say on this one, but, you know, all certainly earlier Kitaro stories. If you want to get involved and understand the character... Uh, these are a good place to start. Uh, the Birth of Kitaro is an origin story, but you really don't need to read the origin story to understand Kitaro. One of the neat things about this Kitaro 
is that it ex there's a lot of explanation of the character in the first few chapters. So you do understand some of the, the character and what he does. Origin story, again, is one of those things where, okay, it's an origin story, but he's a kid who can see yokai and has powers. Now, I should point out, the thing about Kitaro is that he has a wide variety of powers. This goes back to the classic style of um, early or mid-20th century manga where characters just had abilities. And sometimes they were the same and sometimes they changed and you just never really knew. So sometimes, you know, um, Kitaro uses his hair as a weapon and uh, the powers just change a lot over the course of the story. Uh, it's not really consistent from story to story. Part of that is because the yokai that Kitaro is dealing with are different in every story too. So only having this limited range of powers will quickly become uninteresting. To really... Um, uh, different take on this kind of a, of a horror story where Kitaro is this little boy who goes off and and, uh, and fights things. What's also unusual is the overall tone. Kitaro is not a an upbeat, chipper, you know, Russian where angels fear to tread shonen hero. He's definitely very brave and courageous, and he takes on a lot of, of dangerous yokai, but there's a melancholy to Kitaro. He is always alone. Uh, people appreciate what he does, but he does not, he doesn't get, you know, invited to stay with people. He, or not for any length of time, he is a loner who has a job to do and does it at great danger to himself. Uh, if you read Astro Boy, there's a lot of Astro Boy in Kitaro. This is a manga that I just loved reading. I started reading it and just could not put it down both of these volumes. Um, you get some wonderful, creepy manga stories over time as folks uh, are, are taken by various weird yokai. And there are a lot of really bizarre yokai in these stories, too. I will give you, for example, this one. So, yeah, it can be pretty creepy at times. And what's nice is it never gets gory to my recollection, but it gets weird and it gets horrific in the best sense of the, of, of the term. Um, I don't think anything in here would be, um, would, would give, you know, kids nightmares. I wouldn't give it to really young kids, just because of the creepiness of some of the creatures. And some of the creatures are just very differently visually from what we're used to from monsters. Uh, so just that kind of, not body horror, but that, that weirdness of the character design is something to be aware of. Certainly something I would give to a uh, 12 or up, you know, kid. And uh, and if you're interested in kind of the history of manga and some of these early classic characters, definitely give some of Kitaro a try.